On Friday 17 November, Joseph Bokai became Liberia's new leader after his rival and sitting president, George Weir, conceded a tight election. This marks a peaceful transfer of power in a region that has recently seen many military coups. Joseph Bokai portrays himself as a simple man who rose from humble beginnings through hard work. According to his official website, against the odds he secured a good education by working as a cleaner to pay his school fees. During this campaign for the 2023 elections, he successfully managed to craft a more energetic image after earning the unfortunate title of Sleepy Joe for his propensity to fall asleep at public events. In this episode of African Biographics, we'll look at the rise to power of Liberia's new leader, Joseph Bokai, as well as the gargantuan task that lays ahead of him to build Liberia. Born in November 1944 into what many have called humble beginnings, Joseph Bokai grew up in the remote village of Wosonga on the border with Sierra Leone, in Liberia's northernmost county, Ilofa. His parents were farmers and could not read or write. According to Bokai, during his youth days, he walked more than 300 miles twice from Wasonga to Monrovia in search of his dream to be educated. Along the way, he did odd jobs, including working at the American rubber giant Firestone Plantation in Harbour, more than 35 miles from the capital Monrovia, where he helped his guardian in tapping rubber for livelihood. Once he got to Monrovia, and as with many African children of limited means, Joseph Bokai bounced from one family home to another until he enrolled at the College of West Africa, one of Liberia's prestigious secondary schools. When he won a place at this prestigious school in the 1950s, he helped pay his school fees by working as a school janitor, cleaning floors and toilets at night and studying by day. Joseph Bokai later graduated from the University of Liberia with a bachelor's degree in business administration. After graduating, Joseph Bokai served in managerial positions in the Liberia Produce Marketing Corporation in the early 80s. He was then appointed as Minister of Agriculture from 1983 to 1985 under President Samuel Do. As a minister, he oversaw the program to decentralize agriculture by creating regional hubs and this became a major project in Liberia where many people are subsistence farmers. In 1991, Joseph Bokai served as managing director of the Liberian Petroleum Refining Corporation under the interim government of national unity during the brutal Liberian civil war. This war had started on Christmas Eve in 1989 when a band of more than 150 insurgents crossed the border into northern Liberia from the Ivory Coast. These insurgents were members of a newly formed group, the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, headed by a Liberian exile, Charles Taylor. Joseph Bokai later went into private business following the replacement of the interim government of national unity and traveled extensively. He also spent some time in Ghana but mostly remained home during the Liberian civil war crisis. In 2005, Liberia's Ellen Johnson Sirleaf became the first woman to be elected as head of state in Africa. Joseph Bokai was elected vice president under President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, a position he held for 12 years. As someone who was a heartbeat away from the presidency for 12 years and deeply involved in the difficult task of transition from conflict to peace and development, Joseph Bokai played a key role domestically and on the global stage in shaping policies that set Liberia on the track to recovery. During those 12 years, Liberia tried to turn the page on two civil wars that had left this once moderately prosperous country in ruins. But Liberia also experienced the deadly Ebola epidemic and remained one of the world's poorest countries. During these 12 years, the regime of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and Joseph Bokai was also accused of nepotism and corruption. When President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's two terms ended, Joseph Bokai decided to run for president in 2017, but he narrowly lost to George Weir in a runoff that year. Much of George Weir's support came from the Liberian youth and his bid was also bolstered by the fact that Ellen Johnson Sirleaf did not endorse Bokai who was a vice president. During these elections, Joseph Bokai was campaigning on a platform of stability and his vast experience in government. Some people saw Joseph Bokai as a beacon of stability but other voters were looking for change, especially the young and poor who worshipped George Weir's footballing success. During these contentious elections, Joseph Bokai came out saying he believed the election was designed to be rigged with allegations of ballot stuffing and false voter registration cards. 
Joseph Pokai also accused his former boss, Elian Johnson Salif, of supporting George Weir. This claim was bolstered by a joint public event held by Ellen Johnson Salif and George Weir just before the elections. Anyways, George Weir's election in 2017 was an historic event marking Liberia's first democratic transfer to power since 1944. In his inaugural address on January 22, 2018, George Weir promised to fight corruption, pay civil servants, and show the private sector that Liberia was open for business. The economy grew by 4.8% in 2022, driven by gold production and a good rise in cassava harvest. However, more than 80% of Liberia's population of 5 million people still faced moderate or severe food insecurity. While much of the immediate post-war period laid the foundation for rebuilding Liberia and setting it on a developmental path, many Liberians say that recent years, especially under the Weir regime, have not only eroded many of the gains that were made but have been laden with despair because of the inexorable economic decline, social crisis and insecurity among others. Drug use is said to be on the rise among the many unemployed youth. Power supply is unreliable across Liberia and pitted roads hinder travel. This is why the George Ware regime was accused of being corrupt. In September 2018, Liberian media reported that shipping containers filled with newly printed Liberian dollars totaling over $100 million went missing from the country's port. This scandal resulted in the Bring Our Money Back protest. Later that year, there was also an alleged mismanagement of a $25 million injection into the economy. In 2022, the United States Treasury sanctioned Nathaniel McGill, the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, Cyrenia Cephas, the Solicitor General, as well as Bill Twehai, the Managing Director of Liberia's National Port Authority, for their involvement in public corruption. The then-President George Weir accepted the resignations of the three officials and promised investigations, but since then, the state has not prosecuted any of these officials. In 2022, Liberia was ranked poorly on Transparency International's Corruption Index, coming out 142 out of a total 180 countries. Joseph Bokai remained determined to enter the highest office in Liberia since the 2017 disappointment, declaring his intention to contest the October 2023 presidential elections. His campaign focused on agriculture while also accusing George Weir's administration of mismanagement. Throughout the campaign, Bokai was presented as a man of integrity whose credentials made him the only candidate able to tackle corruption that became rampant during George Weir's tenure. At the same time, many Liberians saw Bokai's scandal-free public life and calm demeanor as an antidote to George Weir whose glitzy career as one of Africa's best ever soccer players took him to clubs in Milan, London and Paris but which critics say left him ill-equipped to rule. Some of Joseph Bokai's supporters were even quoted saying, Joseph Bokai strikes me as a grandfather figure, someone you would trust with your life, and now we are trusting him with the country's life. In the run-up to these 2023 elections, Joseph Bokai skillfully built alliances with local political leaders such as the former warlord Prince Yomi Johnson, who had supported George Weir in 2017 and still enjoys strong support in his native Nimba County. By the way, Prince Yomi Johnson is the same person who was seen in a 1990 video sipping beer while his soldiers tortured and killed President Samuel Do. An ally of Prince Yomi Johnson was Joseph Bokai's running mate and their ticket won easily in the heavily populated northeastern region of Liberia. In the first round of this election, neither Joseph Bokai nor George Weir secured more than 50% required for victory, so they faced off in a second round. The official results of this runoff election that were released on Friday 17 November showed that Joseph Bokai had 50.9% of the vote over George Weir's 49.1% with more than 99% of votes counted. This prompted George Weir to concede defeat. Liberia's new president-elect Joseph Bokai faces a huge task to rebuild Africa's oldest republic which was founded in 1822 but has struggled to emerge from two civil wars that killed more than 250,000 people between 1989 and 2003 and from the Ebola epidemic in which thousands more died. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.